Stanislaw here, and in this lesson, we're going to be talking about customizing the city road composition from M Travel 2. I'm in Final Cut Pro, and inside the M Travel 2 pack, I have my different compositions. So just hovering over this, I can see this is the one I'm going to use. And you'll notice I have a bunch of other objects here on my screen. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click my titles and templates sidebar. And that's just going to hide it for right now, just so we're not distracted by it. Just like all the rest of our templates, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drag it into my timeline. Playing this back, this isn't exactly what I'm going to have it do, but we're going to get into that customization in a second. The first thing I want to do is I want to decide how long I want my actual template to be. So currently right now I can see that it is at 10 seconds. So if I wanted to change this to say 15 seconds, I can just grab the handle and drag it to about 15 seconds. You can see my tool tip here that pops up and it's telling me right now it's at 1428 or 1502. It's a little hard to get it to exactly 15 seconds, right? So a little tip, I'm gonna click on it. I can see it's highlighted. I'm gonna hit control D and control D is gonna let me set the total duration of my clip. If I look over here in my timeline, I can see that it's at 1502. I'm just gonna change this to 15 zero zero and that is 15 seconds and zero frames depending on your frame rate that may be a different number of frames i'm working in 30 frames per second or 29.97 i'm going to zoom in my timeline a little bit here by hitting command plus and that's just so i can see this a little bit better on my screen if you have a trackpad you can also just pinch and zoom it and that's going to be another way that you can kind of view things a little bit better so now that we have this I wanna go ahead and I wanna adjust a few things. What's great about the templates from Motion VFX is it's really easy to make a lot of changes very quickly. So if I want to go ahead and I wanna change the starting point, you'll notice I'm trying to click on it and nothing's happening. And the reason for that is we need to actually select it in our timeline. Once we have this selected, now we can work with this a little bit more. So for example, I can move this starting point, but I can't really change a whole lot of other things. I'm just gonna hit Command Z to undo that. And the way that we adjust all of our templates are the same way we adjust everything else. And that's gonna be in the inspector. And the inspector is gonna be in this top right corner up here if you haven't used it before. Those of you that, that have are probably very familiar with it. And our inspector gives us all the controls that we have for our specific template or plugin. Now, it may look like there's a whole lot of different controls in here. There are, but once you understand how they work, they're all pretty similar from template to template or plugin to plugin with a few exceptions. If I play this back, you'll see that my drop zone travels along this path. And let's explore this a little bit more because maybe we don't want this starting and end point to be in those locations. So I'm gonna come up to my inspector and in the settings mode, we're gonna change this from final camera to settings. And in our settings, you can see we have all these different on-screen controls now. If I go back to the beginning, I'm gonna hit the home key and I'll play that back. You can see there's my whole path drawing along with my start and end points. So this is actually where my starting point is and here are the rest of my different points. Clicking on any of these on-screen controls will let me alter my different points. Now, what if we don't need all these extra points? Well, that's what we're gonna come into, into our route line segment number. By default, there's 15, and we can change this to something a little bit more manageable. I think for this example, I'll change this to eight. And now what that's done is it's changed our maximum number of points to eight segments. So playing this back, it's animating from point A to point B. Now I wanna set this up so it starts here and we kind of travel along this path and end up over here. This is where I want my end point to be. My start point will be right around here. So to change that, I'm gonna change my start point to right around here. And I'll change my end point to about here as well. Now, every time that we're changing one of these, we're actually changing the values in this position over here. I have point one on off and I can click this on and off and that'll turn it off, turn it on. We can also change the color and override the specific position. We're gonna get into the rest of this in a second, but let's go ahead and set up the rest of these items. Let's go ahead and start our start point and our end point. And it may be a little hard to see my pathway that I have here. And if we wanna change that, let's change our magnification, which is gonna be in this top right corner. 
I'm gonna change this to something around 400. And now this is zoomed in and I can't see my whole screen. And that's what this little viewer is for. So panning around here, it's gonna let me pan around that whole screen. And now we can see things a little bit more clearly. So here's my starting point text that we can't see just yet. See, I've clicked on it and it says starting point. I'm gonna click on my template controls and get back to that. And I'll change this point to about here. And I'm gonna take these points and just line up my points a little bit more. So this is my third point, and this is my fourth point, fifth, sixth, seventh. I'm just gonna maneuver these to kind of get into a base shape. Now, what if we wanna adjust these points a little bit more? What if we have specific coordinates we kinda of wanna put these things at? Well, just like we have the rest of our controls, if we scroll to the bottom, we have these different segment positions for X and Y. So I can really fine tune these items to get them very specific. It could be a little hard to see in this view. So I can change this back to my final camera at the top of my title template. I'm still zoomed in at 400%. And I can see that that starting one point is a little further off than where I want that point to actually exist. So I'll move back to my controls. And I can adjust this by just pulling this back and forth. You'll notice the camera's moving too. And that's because the camera is animating along the path. And to get this a little bit more finessed, to get a little bit more finer controls, I'll hold on to Alt Option. And what that's doing is it's slowing down my movement. And I can get it to right about there. Now this drop zone's in the way. Let's turn that off for right now. I'm gonna go to my cursor type and change it from drop zone to just a circle. And now I want this path to move along here. So again, I can be using my individual controls, but I always like to start with the setting controls and zoom it in and adjust it that way. So I might even want to zoom in a little bit more to see this a little bit better. I'm gonna take this right along this path and we wanna end up right along here. So I might have to move this path just a little bit to get it finessed. Now, what if you want a little bit more curvature to those lines? Well, we can come up to the controls and we have route line roundness. And as I increase that, that kind of makes things a little bit more precise if I take it down to one, or it makes it a little bit more fluid if I take it up to like say 40. But we're not limited to just a linear kind of progression. Now, this is gonna be great for this particular city, but if we were kind of taking a different path around like a country or something that may not be as flat as these lines, like a grid, we may wanna change this from linear to like say a Bezier or a B-spline. And you can see that that's changing the way that these lines work. Now I'm a big fan of these B-splines because it's a little bit more fluid. So I can kind of get a little bit more control as you can see right along this path than I would normally get from a linear control. And so I can get these fairly tight and create a really smooth area in some places, but then get them really nice and tight. Whereas if I'm in the Bezier control, it wants to use those two handles of traditional Beziers that may make it a little bit more challenging. So depending on what kind of map you're using, you may have some different options. I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to B-spline. We can also go ahead and change the color of our route. So for example, if we have a very specific color we want to use as a call out or something to kind of stand out from the map a little bit more. In this case, a red may stand out a little bit brighter uh, than the blue because we have blue in our map already. That's something we can do. Another thing is we have our opacity. So we can kind of adjust this over time using these keyframes. So as an example, I'm gonna go ahead and play this back again. And what if I want that to fade in across time? So we can start at the beginning here. I'm just using my cursor and I can make a keyframe and change this down to let's say zero. And we'll go a couple frames later, maybe a second later. And I'll bring that up. So as it's animating, it's also fading in. Just depends on what you wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna remove those keyframes by using my keyframe control and just clicking the keyframe button and change that back to 
So now that we've got that, I can change our thickness of the line. So again, this is great so I can see exactly if it's on my path or not. And then we can go ahead and thicken that up. So we've talked about making our different paths. Let's go back to the final camera and finish this up. So I'm gonna change this to fit. And now this is the way it's going to animate from start to finish. So if I go to the very beginning, I'll play this back. There's my starting point. And depending on the length of your composition, it's automatically going to animate across time. Now, what if I want this to be zoomed in a little bit more? So for example, this is pretty far out, right? And I want this to be starting closer. That's what we have here with this final camera zoom. So I can take this and we can make this, let's say negative 400. Maybe let's go to 500, negative 500. And now when I play this back, it's gonna start a lot closer. Now at my finish line, you can see my text is kind of covering up my dot and maybe I don't want that. Well, it's really easy to just grab it and move it down here. We can also change the color of these icons. So these two icons are referred to as our point one and point two. And if we go to our controls, we can see both of them here. So this is my point two and that's what we have right here. And again, maybe I'll change this to green bit of a dark green. And maybe I don't want it to say finish line, but just finish. Check that out. It automatically changes the size of my box. But if I need that box to be bigger, I have controls for it here in this bar width. And we're not limited to just this text. So I can go ahead and I can click the text for this and change it to anything else I'd like. So in this case, I'm gonna change it to something radical. And I wanna make sure that I do the same thing for my starting point, just so that way they're the same font. And that's gonna be right here. So description one font. And I'll also change that to radical. And again, let's change the starting point. I'll make this something red. So we've got kind of like a red and green thing going on. And I think that's what I wanna change for right now. The other things I wanna change is this cursor type. So we talked about this, where we change it to a circle. We can also change it to a ring. And we have controls just for this too. So we have our radius that we can kind of work with here. We can also change the width and alter the overall stroke of that ring. The other thing I wanna talk about is this drop zone. So this drop zone for the cursor lets me use any kind of footage or image in my drop zone. So by clicking on this, I can choose what I wanna place in here. The trick is you need to have it already imported into Final Cut. So I've clicked in here and there's this black box and I'll click on my media and this picture of myself and I'll apply the clip. Now that's a little large for me, but we can work with this. So I can take this drop zone scale and make it a bit smaller and even work the pan a little bit, right? So I wanna take it to right about there. And now if I go ahead and I fit this and I play this back from the beginning, there's my starting point and I'm gonna travel along that path to my endpoint, But we can use any kind of footage that we have in this as well too. If you have video of somebody running or driving or whatever the case may be, we can easily do that. So we have a couple more things that we can do to this using mTravel too. Let's say for example, we want to add a little bit more animation to this. Well, we can do that using some of the overlays. One of the things I really like to do is use this lighting effect and I'll grab and I'll drag that down here. Now you see we have this really nice kind of airy effect and we can quickly change those items too. And let's go ahead and add these lines to this as well. And the last thing I'm going to do is add one of these, right? So I'm gonna add a lower third, 01, right on top. And you can see I'm just stacking these one right after the other. And we're gonna take this one, this lower third, 01, I'm gonna change the continent type to none. And I'll change the title bar opacity along with our subtitle opacity. And now if we had like a race that we're running, so in this case, I'll just say marathon race. I'll say number of runners. And let's say there's 360 runners. 
and we'll say an average time. And I know the average time is around four hours and some minutes, but because I'm realistic, I'm going to say my average time would be somewhere around six hours and 24 minutes. And I think that's still being pretty generous. Playing that back, you can see we've created this whole animation with a starting point, end point, and actually traveling along here with some information all very quickly. Last thing I want to change right here is this last dot. It looks like I left that there. And we'll just turn that point off. And that's our indicator right here. That's a quick, easy way that you can create your own route using mTravel2. This could be great for road trips, for information, educational content, or travel vlogging. So far, we've taken a look at stylizing and changing our map points and icons. One last section we should touch on is how to replace our background map. Chances are you won't be using this map and would like to use your own. Navigating to the inspector, we can supply our own map using this drop zone. To use it, I'll click on the drop zone icon and select a map from my media library. In this case, I've got one from Thailand that I'm using from Google Maps. I'll click it and then select apply clip. That's replaced our map. However, our path may not make a lot of sense. And my map is a little too zoomed in. Let's adjust this using the pan and scale controls inside our inspector. Underneath our drop zone, we have our scale and our pan. Because it's a little hard to see, I'll change my setting mode back to settings. And now I can clearly see how large my map is in accordance with our drop zone and our background. To change these values, we can use the map scale. If we want a border, we'll just adjust our scale a bit smaller than our canvas. From here, we can change the background color. I think I'll choose something blue. Next, I'll rearrange my points. Just like before, I'll change my magnification, just so I can see this a little bit better. If I have too many points, I can change the number of points, just like we've done before. In this case, I think I'll choose five. I can see the beast blinds aren't necessarily giving me the look that I like for this path. So instead, I'll change it from beast blinds to linear. As you can see, it's easy to set up your own maps and create paths in mTravel2. If I'd like to speed this up, I'll just shorten my composition. This has been Stanislaw Robert Liberta with Motion VFX, and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching.